GarageBand on Mac is renowned for having an incredibly high quality suite of software instruments and sounds that you can play with and record. To get to grips with these killer sounds, you'll need to use GarageBand's software instrument track. In this GarageBand tutorial for beginners video, I'll show you how. You'll be prompted to create a track from the four different types available when you open a new GarageBand project. Alternatively, you can hit the plus icon here to add a new track at any time. From the track select menu, you want to click on software instrument. Your new software instrument track will be created and will default to this electric piano sound. You can play your software instrument sounds using a USB or MIDI music keyboard if you have one, or you can use your Mac's typing keyboard by selecting window in the toolbar at the top and clicking on show musical typing. To select a software instrument sound, open GarageBand's library pane, if it isn't open already, by clicking the library icon in the top left of the screen, or by using the keyboard shortcut Y. GarageBand's sounds are organised into categories such as bass, guitar, orchestral, synthesizer, and so on. Simply click on a category and then the name of the patch you want to load. From here, it's just a case of hitting record and playing your chosen software instrument. With the basics out of the way, here are a couple of tips to help you get the most from your software instrument tracks in GarageBand. By default, software instrument tracks are set up to overdub, and that means they record a performance on top of an existing performance, merging them into a single region. This isn't always ideal, however. You can change the software instrument settings to instead record multiple versions or takes when re-recording over the same section. To do this, head to GarageBand in the toolbar at the top and click Preferences. In General Preferences, choose Create Takes from the Cycle On pop-up menu. With this enabled, click on this greyed out bar at the section above the GarageBand workspace. You should see it turn yellow. You can drag this cycle region to anywhere you like on the timeline and resize it by clicking and dragging on either end. When you're ready to record, use the record button or hit the space bar on your typing keyboard. And then use your MIDI keyboard, musical typing window or on-screen keyboard to play some notes. Now you can record as many cycle passes as you wish. When you're done, click the stop button the selected software instrument track contains a closed take folder with multiple takes inside. You can access all your different recorded takes by clicking the small number in the top corner of your recorded region. You can quantize or automatically correct the timing of any notes in your MIDI regions. This technique is useful when regions in the track contain the right notes, but are not perfectly in time with the rest of your project. You can select and quantize complete software instrument regions or quantize only selected notes in a particular region using the Time Quantize pop-up menu. And it's worth bearing in mind that you can quantize an entire track or 
just specific notes. Either way, you'll need to open the editor window for your software instrument track. You can do this by clicking on the editor button in the top left of GarageBand's window or by using the keyboard shortcut E. Click on either region to affect the timing of a whole or multiple regions or notes to affect specific notes that you select. To quantize an entire track, select the regions in the workspace. To quantize specific notes, click on the individual notes displayed in the editor window's piano roll. From the time quantize pop-up menu, choose the note value you want to use to quantize the timing of the selected items. You may need to play around a little bit here as finding the right note value isn't always going to be an exact science. So try a few different ones if you're not sure and see which works best for you. You're not limited to only playing the software instruments that Apple provide with GarageBand. There are hundreds of premium and free third-party software instruments available to you should you wish to add more sounds to your sonic arsenal. I'll use Spitfire Audio's excellent and free Labs instruments as an example here. Once you install Labs to your Mac, you can access it from your Software Instrument Tracks Smart Controls window. Open Smart Controls by either clicking the Smart Controls button in the top left of GarageBand's window or by using the keyboard shortcut B. Click on the Plugins drop-down menu and click on the small arrows to the right of whatever instrument is currently loaded up. In this menu, navigate your way through the Audio Unit Instruments option, Spitfire Audio option and click on Labs. Now you can play, record and edit these sounds in the same way you would Apple's built-in software instruments. So there you have it. That's all the info you need to get started with GarageBand's software instrument tracks. Which of GarageBand's software instruments do you find you use the most? Any third-party instruments that you would recommend? As always, I love to hear your ideas and feedback. So leave a comment below and let me know. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.